One person had to jump out of a second floor window to escape the flames when a house caught fire in Orono this morning. We'll have the details. Good afternoon. I'm Susan Farley. A man in Bangor allegedly rolled a car while trying to escape from police. And a committee is exploring how to give farm workers a mandated minimum wage. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories coming up. First, let's check in with meteorologist Conrad Sapinski. Conrad. Thank you so much. Our first weather is brought to you by Hot Heads, the art of hair, where your image is my quality of work. Call us today for your next hair appointment, 852-9282. And weather-wise, guys, not looking too bad. Under some mostly cloudy skies, a couple of flurries here and there, but nothing to worry about on our end. Now, a little bit of snow is on the ground here and there, especially north of Millinocket area. That's where you're getting into a couple inches of snow, even more than that in some spots. Look at this, north of Greenville, those darker blue colors that does indicate snowfall on the ground right now of even up to six plus inches of snow. So a lot of snow up there. Later on today, though, we are looking at temperatures hovering around 37 degrees. Flurries will be possible early and then decreasing clouds throughout the day with a light breeze. Now for tonight, it's going to get a bit cool. We're looking at temperatures around 20 degrees, partly cloudy skies with a light breeze. Of course, it's going to feel a lot colder than that. Now for tomorrow, it's going to be chilly. So you want to bundle up out there. Temperatures only hovering around 30 degrees. Mostly sunny skies and breezy conditions once again will make that 30 degree reading feel more like 20 outdoors. Later on this afternoon, temperatures will continue to warm up. Not by much, though. We're only going to be hovering in those mid-30s throughout the afternoon. Thank you, Conrad. An early morning structure fire has sent three people to the hospital. According to officials, a tone went off for a building fire at 287 Main Street in Orono. When first responders arrived, they found significant fire in the back of the building as well as the occupants of the home. Orono Fire Chief Jeff Lowe says that one of the occupants jumped from a window on the second floor to escape the flames. The house has been deemed a total loss, but Chief Lowe says preventative measures could have made a difference. We don't believe there were working smoke alarms inside the residence, and uh, that certainly would have given the occupants more time to get out of the building. That, that early notification might have made the difference in this situation. The cause of the fire is still under investigation, but the fire marshal's office does not consider the situation to be suspicious. Maine State Police are now investigating the deaths of two adults at a home in Searsmont. The Waldo County Sheriff's Office responded to a home on Borough Road in Searsmont a little before 2 Monday afternoon. That's when they discovered that two people were dead. The Maine State Police Major Crimes Unit was called in to investigate and worked well into the evening. The bodies were transported to the office of the Chief Medical Examiner in Augusta, where an autopsy will be performed to determine the cause and manner of death. Authorities aren't releasing any names or speculating on what happened. However, local residents say it's a case of domestic violence. Angler's Restaurant in Searsport also announced it will remain closed today following the loss of one of their employees. The restaurant is also urging others who might be experiencing domestic violence to reach out for help. The domestic violence hotline can be reached by dialing 1-800-7233. State police are also investigating an alleged murder in Saco. That's where 25-year-old Lorenz Levante was arrested Monday and charged with killing 27-year-old Ahmed Sharif of Lewiston. Police say they were called to Biddeford on Friday after a person had been shot in an apartment on State Street. They discovered Sharif had been killed and began looking for the person who was responsible. Last night around 6.30, the state police tactical team arrested Levante at, at home and charged him with Sharif's murder. He is expected to make his first court appearance today. In the town of Denmark, police are also investigating a double murder that happened over the weekend. In that case, a 53-year-old woman who was caring for her partner, a wheelchair user, as well as her 93-year-old grandmother, is now accused of killing both of them. As Mal Meyer reports, authorities say they only found the bodies after attempting two welfare checks late last week. It's kind of a shock. Rick Young would see and talk to his neighbors, Michael Willett and Zara Jones, from time to time, especially around their home. He had no idea anyone else lived there. That's why it sort of took me by surprise. Jones's grandmother, Armin Mayo, reportedly moved in this July. On Friday, 
the sheriff's office initially went to check on the 93-year-old. Jones claimed Mayo went to the hospital, but that wasn't the case. When deputies came back to check on Willett the next day, Jones said he was out of state hunting, but authorities learned the 69-year-old was wheelchair-bound and couldn't have done that. Young says his neighbor had a stroke about two years ago. He seemed to be coherent and, I mean, just other than being in a wheelchair, no different than he ever was that I saw. Court paperwork shows authorities found the bodies of Willett and Mayo inside the house late that afternoon. An autopsy revealed both were stabbed repeatedly and had been dead for more than 24 hours. Police say Jones pretended to be asleep when they found the bodies. She refused to talk to anyone and was taken to a hospital for a mental health evaluation because of her erratic behavior. Jones' sister told authorities that the two had spoken earlier this month and she heard Willett in the background. But her sister said Jones expressed being tired of taking care of them both, something Jones's father also told police. The sister believes Jones killed Mayo, possibly for an inheritance or will. Overnight in Bangor, a man allegedly rolled a car while trying to escape from police. At about 11.30 p.m., the Bangor Police Department received a report that a man was acting suspiciously on 2nd Street. While the officer was en route, the caller indicated the man was now behind the wheel of a car, operating it erratically. When officers arrived, they attempted to pull him over, but he sped off. The vehicle, a dark-colored BMW, then turned onto Cedar Street while crossing the intersection of Cedar and Hammond Street. The operator lost control. The car rolled and struck a utility pole. The man was transported to a local hospital by the fire department. The incident is still under investigation by evidence technicians and detectives. A Florida man has been sentenced to eight years in prison for trafficking methamphetamine in the Bangor and Holton areas. 32-year-old Jared Fogg will also spend five years on supervised release following his prison term. He pleaded guilty to conspiring to distribute and possessing with the intent to distribute in April. According to court records, Fogg was obtaining large quantities of methamphetamine from Florida and distributing it in Bangor and Holton from May to July of 2018. On July 12, 2018, a truck driven by a co-conspirator was stopped by law enforcement in Lincoln. Fogg was a passenger. A search uncovered 30 grams of heroin and 100 grams of methamphetamine along with a loaded gun and more than $20,000 in cash in Fogg's bag. How to give farm workers a mandated minimum wage. It's a topic one committee in Augusta explored Monday. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard was there and has more on some of their proposed recommendations. It's certainly been a bumpy road technologically in many of our meetings. I really appreciate everyone just having good humor and rolling with this. Technology problems delayed the start of the meeting for the Agricultural Workers Minimum Wage Committee, a committee established by an executive order from Governor Janet Mills after she vetoed LD-398, an act to make agricultural workers and other related workers employees under wage and hour laws, which was passed by the 131st legislature. This committee is tasked with coming up with better recommendations. This of, of my proposal, this is Eric of the Wild Liberty Commission, um, was simply to give ag workers minimum wage, um, which I think a lot of people can agree to based on what the um, two different subcommittees came to the table with. One of the recommendations being floated would carve out the existing labor laws, which would pay farm workers the minimum wage, but not entitle them to other provisions such as mandatory overtime, record keeping, or enforcement regulations, something that not everyone on the committee was on board with. A big concern for me is making things more confusing and having lots of carve-outs. I feel like we um, last in the last legislative session and in the last stakeholders group, we worked really hard to streamline and pare down and narrow the focus and really um, compromised a lot away and learned from each other. The Agricultural Workers and Minimum Wage Committee will hold its final meeting on December 11th at 1 p.m., where they will vote to make their recommendations final and present them to the governor. In Augusta, I'm Cora Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The director of the Office in Child and Family Services is stepping down. According to DHHS, Todd Landry has stepped down, citing personal reasons for his departure. 
In a statement from the department, current associate director of child welfare services Bobby Johnson will serve as the acting director of OCFS, effective immediately as the department searches for a permanent director. The Department of Health and Human Services has been under scrutiny for adults and children who have died while in the state's care. A Blue Ribbon Commission to study EMS services in Maine gathered again Monday. Much of the meeting was spent talking about possible recommendations they would make to the legislature regarding how to revamp and expand emergency medical services to the entire state, including parts of the state that are currently unserved or underserved by EMS services. We do have a recommendation from the Maine EMS strategic plan on the structure of Maine EMS, and it goes to this whole structural question that perhaps with some downsides we should talk about, could enhance the speed at which things get done. And that is giving the department the authority that other departments have to develop and promulgate certain rule as it applies to the system as a whole. The commission's final vote on recommendations is due before December 15th. After that, their recommendations will be presented to the legislature when the next session begins on January 3rd. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, we'll tell you about a whale that washed up in Stu Ben. We'll be right back. Caswell's Grocery Liquidation, where you shop first. Shop local. Great savings and selection. It's worth the trip. You won't be disappointed. Your dollar goes a long, 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 long way at Caswell. You know that feeling of having to rewash dishes that didn't get clean? I don't. Cascade Platinum Plus with double the Dawn grease fighting power and double the scrubbing power for a no rewash clean and a cabinet ready shine. Upgrade to Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare to dish differently. At Central Maine Denture, licensed denturist Patrick Allen has been creating smiles with private care and premium service for many years and is now serving patients in Eastern Maine at his new Bangor office. Central Maine Denture provides full, partial, immediate, hybrid, and implant dentures, as well as repairs, relines, and rebases. Patrick Allen makes all of the dentures in-house from start to finish, and the quality shows in his patients' happy smiles. Now you can reclaim your smile at Central Maine Dentures. Pro football fans, it's You Pick 'em NFL, the Pro Football Challenge from Fox 22. Go to foxbangor.com, click on You Pick 'em, and go to You Pick 'em NFL. Make your picks, and you could be the weekly winner of either a $25 gift certificate from Chase's Family Restaurant in Bangor or from Chick fil A in Bangor. Brought to you by Mainly Eyes in Bangor, Twin City Tile in Brewer, Twin City Tint in Brewer, and Winterport Sheds. Compete all season long for the grand prize of $5,000. It's You Pick 'em NFL from foxbangor.com. Happy Holidays from Colbury Enterprises. We wish peace and joy this holiday season for all and a happy new year. ADA Fence would like to thank all past and present customers for their patronage. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy Holidays from Caring Companions and Home Care. Call for help with your daily personal care. Employment opportunities available. The Rotary Club of Bangor's Festival of Lights Parade, Saturday, December 2nd. Locals are searching for a young whale that washed up on shore last week in Stu Ben. Our Grace Blanchard spoke with marine officials and locals about the rare sighting. Well, that's the big question. It's not every day that a nearly 50-foot-long whale makes an appearance on shore but it happened along Pigeon Hill Bay last Thursday. I've seen many alive finback. I've never seen them on shore like this. According to the Maine Department of Marine Resources, they were alerted that a fin whale was spotted along the beach, and although there were no obvious signs of trauma or entanglement, the whale passed away shortly after landing on the shore. There's been a presence there ever since the animal died, just talking and uh, filling in some of those blanks of questions that people have about the whale. The fin whale is the second largest in the world behind the blue whale and is one of the four largest whale species found right in the Gulf of Maine. 
I keep looking to see if it is still remaining here or if it uh, if it's been taken out to sea. This sighting brought onlookers to the area all weekend long, and after high winds and waves seemed to push the whale out to sea, locals and visitors lined the beach searching for the fin whale. We're on try number three to find the whale. Yep. Um, we came early this morning. Tide uh, was a little too high. Tide was really, really high. We were visiting my son for Thanksgiving, and he showed us pictures. He came to visit it on Saturday night and uh, we walked right up to it. So we saw the pictures and we said, we'd like to see it too. Although the sighting is exciting, the guidance from the Marine Mammal Stranding Coordinator is to avoid touching it and report to them if it makes its way to shore again. Well, that up close would, is just an experience that is pretty unusual. Enthusiasm has not yet waned. Oh, so. definitely not. <laughs> still very, very excited about it. In Stuben, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The University of Maine Student Wellness Center held Walk in Our Shoes as part of its Mental Health Monday segment. Students had the opportunity to look through magazines and for pictures and issues that they care about, then use them to put together a collage. UMaine's student life educator Kevin Hudson says the event is to remind those who are struggling that there's always something positive to look forward to. It's really hard to find affirmation sometimes in others. Um, and an event like this that focuses on the self uh, you are creating your own happiness. Uh, it, it gives it a little bit more ownership. The, the person has a little bit more authority in, in what they uh, are able to bring for themselves. Hudson says the Student Wellness Center holds a mental health related event on Monday every week from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Bangor City Council approved a grant last night that would bring a little more creativity to the Bangor Public Library. The grant helps to support the exhibit of 12 portraits from painter Robert Shetterly's Americans Who Tell the Truth series. The portraits depict some of America's most outspoken change makers along with their famous quotes. Officials say the exhibit aims to inspire all in the greater Bangor area. Bangor is a very progressive city. They're, you know, we're led by people who, you know, are very outspoken and, you know, want to see the city become something even better than we already are. And so it's exciting to have these portraits um, of these people who have done amazing things throughout the world, throughout our country, and, you know, to be able to have that part of our library. It's not known yet when the paintings are planned to be featured. To view more of the portraits, visit americanswhotellthetruth.org. After the break, it's the season for holiday gatherings and the flu. We'll tell you how to prevent it from spreading in your house when we return. If you're a Medicare beneficiary, call now to see how a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan could get you some big benefits including this all-in-one WellCare Spendables debit card to use for over-the-counter health items. Find out how easy it is to get all of your original Medicare coverage plus extra benefits. A WellCare Medicare Advantage plan is designed to fit your needs so you can be your best every day. You could have medical coverage, coverage for prescription drugs, dental, vision and hearing, and the WellCare Spendables debit card to make getting the coverage you need more convenient. The WellCare Spendables debit card can be used for over-the-counter health items. And here's more good news. You can get a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan with a $0 or low monthly plan premium. How can WellCare offer all of those benefits for a $0 or low monthly plan premium? It's simple. Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage are important parts of Medicare. WellCare has a contract with Medicare to offer and provide these important options to you. Call right now to get your free copy of the WellCare All-in-One Guide. Call 1-877-282-3827 now. There is absolutely no obligation for requesting this free information. WellCare offers benefits that go beyond the basics and we make them easy to use so you can support your best health. Call today to get your free copy of the All-in-One Guide with absolutely no obligation. Your free guide will provide information to make a smart choice for your health care coverage. Just call 1-877-282-3827. Remember, there's no obligation for requesting this free information, so call 1-877-282-3827. Call today.
How white do you think your teeth really are? Let's try the tissue test. Oof, still yellow. Whitening toothpaste can only do so much. There's toothpaste white and there's Crest 3D White Strips White. They whiten like a $400 professional treatment. So much whiter. Crest. To give your teeth a dentist clean feeling, start with a round brush head, add power, and you've got Oral-B. Round cleans better by surrounding each tooth to remove 100% more plaque for a superior clean. Oral-B, brush like a pro. Turning to the Middle East, where Israel and Hamas have agreed to extend their four-day ceasefire for two more days. So far, Hamas has released 69 hostages taken from Israel in exchange for Israel releasing 150 Palestinian prisoners. The extended wartime pause will potentially allow for more hostage releases and more humanitarian aid to reach Gaza. ABC's Justin Finch is tracking developments. Another breakthrough in the Middle East. Israel and Hamas agreeing to two more days of a ceasefire, raising hopes for more scenes like this. Hamas video showing gunmen handing off 11 hostages taken from Israel to Red Cross vans after 52 days in captivity. Emotions flooding families of hostages the moment they learned their relatives were released. <laughs> The initial four-day pause in fighting saw Hamas release 69 hostages, Israel releasing 150 Palestinian prisoners, the Biden administration touting that ceasefire extension and noting potential risks. Any pause in the fighting uh, could benefit uh, uh, your enemy in terms of time to refit, to rest your fighters, to rearm them, uh, re-equip them. The White House says up to nine Americans remain held captive. Four-year-old U.S.-Israeli citizen Abigail Lidon, the first and only American released during that initial ceasefire. Her family now with her at a children's hospital after her parents were killed during the Hamas October 7th Israel attack. We can try and start healing our hearts because we couldn't do it until, until she, she, she didn't came back. In the West Bank, crowds filling the streets of Ramallah, celebrating the release of dozens of Palestinian prisoners. Isra Jabis returning home to hugs from her mother and family and some relief amid devastation in Gaza. A United Nations convoy arriving to Al-Ali Hospital, delivering emergency medical kits, IV drips and much needed supplies. President Biden saluting the leaders of Egypt, Israel and Qatar on extending that ceasefire and saying the U.S. plans to surge war raid into Gaza and will continue working to free all Hamas held hostages. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. With the cold and flu season now upon us, doctors have advice on ways to keep illness from spreading through your household. They say try to separate family members who are sick from the rest of the family and be sure to wear high-grade face masks around anyone who is ill. Medical experts warn the flu has a 25% attack rate. That means for everyone who gets it, a quarter of the people who are in close contact with that person will also come down with it. Doctors say to be sure to keep homes well ventilated and avoid sharing food or drinks with infected people. Frequent hand washing is also a good idea. When we return, Conrad Sapinski has your five-day forecast. My father started a roofing company in the 1970s. Back when asbestos was still commonly used in Maine. When George was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew there wasn't a cure yet, but we knew he needed help. We called Joe Bornstein's office because this family means business. Their team is handling everything, representing Mainers who were victims of asbestos exposure. We highly recommend the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, Geico, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. 
The savings from AAA Insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Hi, folks. This is Barry Gass of Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear in Orono. We've been in business since 1911, and our third-generation family-owned business can't wait to show you our unique line of Western Wear and Western Tack. We have Western boots, shirts, hats, belts, and buckles for the entire family. And Western Tack, from bridles to saddles and everything in between for your horse. Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear, where the American West comes alive in Maine. hours makes. Today started off a whole lot nicer than yesterday. Let's check in with Conrad Sapinski to get your full forecast. Conrad? Today's weather is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. And lots of lake effect snow out there, folks. Not really in our area. A couple of flurries here and there. Most of that heavier snow is in upstate New York, PA, of course, into Ohio. Michigan's getting in on a little bit of snow as well. So not surprised there. Low pressure system moved out of the area. The lakes are still warm. And of course, uh, cold air in the area blowing over the lakes. It does create that lake effect snow. So like I mentioned, a couple of flurries here and there in the region, nothing to really worry about on our end. We're actually gonna stay pretty clear today into tomorrow and then once again into Friday looking pretty good. Of course, a mixture of some clouds and sun, but overall though, not looking too bad. By tomorrow, it's gonna be a bit cooler, but we will see a good amount of sunshine, so it's gonna feel a bit warmer. Now, wind speed wise though, anywhere between a five to 15 mile per hour breeze here in town, we have a sustained wind at around seven miles per hour, so wind gusts are closer to 15 miles per hour. Wow, look at all these temperatures. Mexico even has temperatures in the lower 40s right now. So this cold air mass has made it down all the way to the Gulf Coast. Even Jacksonville, Florida is in the mid 40s right now. So those lizards are not enjoying those 40s at all. I know we are cooling down as well, but still not quite as cold as what's going on in the Midwest right now. We're going to cool down though. Our average high this time of year is around 41. We're going to be below that today, well below that by tomorrow, a bit warmer the next couple of days, Thursday into Friday, and then right back down into those mid to upper 30s by the weekend and then into beginning of next week. For today, though, we are looking at temperatures hovering around 37. Okay, not too bad, but we're going to have a light breeze. It's going to make it feel a lot cooler than that. A couple of lingering flurries here and there, and then we're going to see some decrease in clouds later on. For tonight, though, partly cloudy skies, temperatures around 20 degrees with that light breeze. It's going to feel more like 15, maybe 10 in some spots. And, of course, that feels like temperatures that temperature we feel on our skin for tomorrow though cool temperatures we're only going to be hovering at around 30 mostly sunny skies and breezy conditions as well our extended forecast outlook does show lots of sunshine wednesday thursday more chances of rain by the afternoon hours on friday thank you conrad that's all for abc 7 news at noon thanks for watching i'm susan farley we'll see you this evening with peter dubois and beth jones on abc 7 news at 6 have a great afternoon.